people that have come up about, you know, about stories and have come to the forefront and gotten on interviews talking about what he's, you know, done to people, you know, shit about child raping and like kids and things like that and women, like, you know, it's, it's pretty fun. But I would think like, why would every, why would everybody want to come for him? knowing the way that you know knowing what he is like unless they like if they were doing it to like put him in the dirt they would have put him in the dirt way before diddy the whole meme the internet problem came along they would have put him in the dirt by that right and we are recording so like first of all obviously this i want to say what up to the, to the solar bay unit yes sir all you all you beautiful folks out there yo spence, spence man the incredible the impeccable spencer you know yo i got a backstory to this episode so okay yesterday me and you with all seriousness right like I had you sitting down, I was looking you straight in the eyes, and I was like, so Spence, like it's really serious that we gotta start doing the solo way shit again, right? And yeah. then what did I what did I say? What time did we say for today? Fucking six o'clock. So yo, this dude is hitting me up like 5:30. I'm like, what? Yo, I completely forgot, bro. Completely forgot. Just out of and yo, and I have a, I have an explanation for that. Cause remember I told you that I had these headaches, right? Yeah. So the only thing that was remedy for me for the headaches, I found out was edibles. So now I'm taking, you know what I'm saying? I'm taking these edibles and I'm like my old pothead self from 10 years ago. I'm forgetting everything, bro. I'm like, Yo, it's like we did what like he that. said. He said, Yo, and then like I get the, the, the memory flash in my head and I'm like, holy shit. I, re I remember the instance when we were sitting down, I was looking at you like super seriously, like it was Spence. Check it out, bro. We gotta be get back on this whole solar way shit. <laughs> For forward next day, man. And I'm like, what? We did what? There was a like, yo, sound like bugged out, man. My bad, bro. <laughs> nah, so it's that's, all good. It's all good. Sometimes that, it's nice to be fashionably late. That's the backstory of this episode, man. Like, yo, for real, man. I feel yeah, like a bad a headache, and you just forgot it happens. I feel like a pothead again, yo. To like all the Solovey people, like, all, like I just want you to know that I really, really, really appreciate every single person tuning in. And I gotta be honest, to me, like this whole Solovey thing, like I know that a lot of times it seems like I'm interviewing Spence. Is yeah. because I I want y'all to understand that from a music perspective, right? Like he has so much more knowledge of the music as far as production and like engineering and like all of this shit. So when we doing these when we doing these episodes, I'm asking you these questions as like someone that's interested. You feel me? Like like a aficionado that really wants to know. You know what I'm saying? Like from a professional like you, man. That's why. You know what I'm saying? It seems like I'm like it's it's our podcast, but yeah. I just want I just want all of y'all solo way people to know that for me, like you might find yourself in the same place that I do. That you know what I'm saying? We're learning, man. And that's what this is all about, bro. 100%. That's why that's why when we started like the solo way shit, we were like, yo, we're not gonna do you know gossiping and all this too much and everything. We're gonna try to you know bring people. Obviously, if 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 some ditty shit pops off, you know, probably gotta talk about it. We always gotta talk about what's new in Diddy Land. There's always something new in Diddy Land. Yo, first of all, before we get to Diddy, man, what you been up to, man? So this is Soul of Eight episode six. Because uh, I, I have to, you know, I have to say sorry because you know what I'm saying like it was because of me why we've been delayed. What you been up to, yo? Shit, man. I mean, just same shit, different week. Just, you know, working on my sessions and shit. I was actually out of uh, out of doing sessions for roughly a week and a half because I had to sell my MacBook off. And uh, I just upgraded. Now I'm working on PC. Believe it or not, a lot of people usually don't downgrade or, like, switch operating systems or anything like that. But I've been kind of PC gang initially from the jump. And like, I just, I got into Mac because people said it was like the industry standard. 
And uh, I don't know. I just kind of missed having a PC and like I never had a gaming PC or like a build that was really fast. So I said, fuck yeah. it. So I, yeah. I sold the MacBook. I got a brand new bill, which is so You far. look crisp. You look so crisp tonight, bro. That's the thing. I got the I got the fucking the HD webcam now from Logitech. It looks nice. so much better than that other shit I was using. Um, what else we got? Tomorrow we got yes, oh yo, it's lit. Tomorrow we're playing in Philly. Tree Pod's playing in Philly again. We're coming back to the big out to Tree Pod. Mm-hmm. We're coming back and we got um we got a really, really sick ass new set of shirts that we're selling. So if you guys are in the Philly area tomorrow or something like that, whenever this gets uploaded. I'm saying you got to come out to a show and get this merch because it's really cool. Um, we got stickers now, which is pretty cool. We're going to be rocking out some dad hats come like middle of November, maybe towards the end of November. We're getting beanies. It's going to be insane. Hoodies maybe towards the winter. We'll see. But we got some new show on the way merch-wise. We got a lot of new music on the way. Um, yeah, other than that, just doing sessions and fucking podcasting. You already know. Yo, I love uh, I love the tree pod uh, stuff that you showed me. It reminds me of like uh, like either old school Slavic or old school like uh, Nordic, like uh, you know what I'm saying, like hieroglyphics and shit. Like it looks. Oh, sick, the logo. Bro. Yeah, yeah, it looks sick. Look nice. Dude, I bro. love I like the logo. Nah, yeah. hell yeah, Joel. Like I was telling actually you for the viewers that don't know, our singer Joel actually drew that, which is really cool. If you guys get the chance to peep our Instagram. He, drew, he draws a lot, and he was initially going to be a tattoo artist before he was doing anything uh, band-related. So, you know, he's got tons of designs, and he's great at drawing shit. So he came up with our logo, and we just – we love it. Yo, I've been plotting on, like, before before we started rolling, I've been plotting on what I would really want to, like, learn from you today. So okay. what, what I wanted to get into today is actually album making because, you know uh, – it's not an accident that we just dropped an album. You know what I'm saying? No, like, absolutely not. We made so, heat. so I, uh, you know, what I'm saying I wanted to learn from you like the whole process. But before we do that, bro, so what you think about this whole Diddy situation? <laughs> Let's get into Diddy real quick, bro. <laughs> nah, Diddy's crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, I'm sorry. If you gotta sit there and buy like a thousand dildos and like, or not like a thousand bottles of baby oil and lube and fucking like. 743 dildos or some shit like that like you're a freak fool like you just you got a freaky fetish that you can't get over like you're weird listen Crazy. as a listen as a producer as a creative yourself as a mu musician yourself how prevalent was diddy in your life like as far as music is concerned and everything like when did you first like find out about him and shit and because i'm like as soon as we started talking about it like i I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, Diddy's been part of my life since, like, 97, bro. You right. feel me? Like, like when he was really popping, like, I grew up watching this man. I've been to parties with this dude there. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and so so I wanted to find out from you. You're the young generation. How and, and you know what I'm saying? You're, you're a producer. You're an engineer. Like, you're into music. You've been around hip-hop for all these years. You've been around the industry all these years. Like yeah. how how prevalent was that name and and like Diddy or P like uh, you know what I'm saying in your life, bro? Shoot, I honestly like when I first heard of P Diddy was probably from Pac and like Biggie and like that whole era of like music because like I I came up partially on like Pac and Biggie and like you know the whole wave that these guys had you know mainly yes, I was a late bloomer like I I didn't ride the train early you know what I'm saying like I wasn't there to you know really dive into everything because they're old you know they're ogs of rap music of course <laughs> when i when i discovered of them when i discovered them and shit i obviously found out who diddy was and things like that king combs i believe is his son i believe um and not only that too i have a couple of friends in new york city as well as um personal friends of mine that actually has gone to parties believe it or not i'm leading you i'm leading you to a question um, that's a really important question, at least to me, I think to people, it should be, how yeah. does this affect his legacy, his music? Like, like, like as oh, being, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to think of this as a fan, you know what I'm saying? Like, even for someone like me, I watched, especially being involved with hip hop and in music, like this dude was running New York since I was a kid. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He he was running the city and you was looking up to these dudes, even though I never, I never really 
I gotta be honest. I never really liked the Diddy vibe, whatever. I was more on, you know, saying like Wu Tang gritty shit, but like, yo, yeah, Nas. Yeah. Nas and shit, but still, like, we watch these people, we give these people all this intention, we give them, you know what I'm saying, pieces of our lives, we go out, we, we like, buy their shit, like, you know what I'm saying, yeah. we order we order their mu movie, whatever, whatever, like, we are involved, uh, involved, man, so the question, as a professional musician, and I'm pretty sure you understand what I'm talking about, like, these people yeah. are kind of part, part of our lives, man, because we do this shit, like, this is our industry. Absolutely. So how does this affect his legacy, man? Something this dirty and nasty. I mean, it destroys part of it. I mean, the thing about the whole Diddy case scenario, I mean, it's like people are coming out in different time frames to say different things about him, but it all correlates back to him being a freak, freaky bull. You feel what I'm saying? Like again, there's a lot of different allegations. And, like, I was about to say, media, I was but, about to, I was about to say, it looks like you kind of, you kind of like leading somewhere. Are you trying to even slightly imply that maybe he's not what they're painting him to be? Because we know for media to always blow shit out of proportion. Like, what do you think, man? It's like, I mean, there, there's, there could, all right. It's, it's more so there could be a chance that certain things. Because like you said, media likes to target negativity and negativity is trendy and negativity is, um, you know, viral or popular. And that's what people feed off of nowadays. So like a lot of the shit that we might see not e might not even be fucking real. And it could be headlines generated by people or generated by companies to gain, you know, what I'm saying clout and shit like that. But you don't know. I mean, like there are real no. people that have come up, about, you know, about stories and have come to the forefront and gotten on interviews talking about what he's, you know, done to people, you know, shit about child raping and like kids and things like that. And women, like, you know, it's, it's pretty fucked up, but I would think like, why would every, why would everybody want to come for him knowing the way that, you know, knowing for what he is like, unless they like, if they were doing it to like put him in the dirt, they would have put him in the dirt way before Diddy, the whole meme, the internet problem, came mm. along they would have put mm. him in the dirt by then right so why is it like what now you're gonna wait this long to fucking slander bull like of course listen, you're trying to get a check listen we live in a world like pay attention man we live in a world of profit and competition and it's all about profit 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 baby you know what yeah. i'm saying like all these corporations these mega you know what i'm saying entities business entities man that's all they really that's all they really about and if some competition once you out of the way, you're going to be out of the way one way or another. You know what I'm saying? Sullivan. So, but as far as Diddy goes, um, I don't know if you know, like four years ago, I think, or five years ago, I put out a personal story because, again, you know, I was in a uh, celebrity jury business for quite a while. So I was in the circles, like, you know, going to parties. I've been to yeah. a party with, with, I've been to a party where Diddy was and where Jigga was, but like they were they were constantly surrounded by they, those were a couple of dudes that i never met personally meaning like i never shook their hand and shit because like they were always surrounded security and all of that shit but yeah, yeah what i'm leading to is that four years ago i put out a video that um it went i mean it has like two hundred eighty thousand views talking about diddy turning out another celebrity rapper i won't say it in this video if you want go check that video um and I remember when, like, the comment section was just tearing me up, like, oh, my God, how could you this and that? So fast forward, huh. like, fast forward five years later, we are in the situation we are in. And what I'm leading to is that I was in the, you know, celebrity jury business since, like, 2008, 2009. And I've always heard some sort of stories pointing at Diddy. This is what I'm really leading to. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah. Because we know that the media, they could one day you're a hero, tomorrow you're a, the craziest villain. Like it could happen in, in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? So, sure. so we don't really trust them all the way, but I've been hearing stories about Diddy, man. Right. So I mean, I mean, if there's already backlash and already, you know, prerequisites, even your case scenario, like there's got to be something going on with him. Yeah. Because like, like they say, there's never a smoke without a fire, right? But yeah. but I, but what I'm really, you know, trying to focus on is 
how like as far as everything that he's done for the music industry especially hip hop like this is the man that brought us Biggie and the locks and bust the rhymes and I'm talking like as far as bringing these people to you know a mega uh you know mega stardom worldwide it was it was Diddy man 97 98 99 when I was a kid this is all we seen the most expensive you know, video ever made, like all this crazy yeah. shit. So Fucking bad boy records, man. That was the, one of the most popping labels it, too. It was like before the millennia hit, before 2000 hit, he was running the industry, bro. Like, forget about it, man. It was all, it was all P Diddy. You know what I'm saying? But back in the day it was Puffy, Puff, Puffy, whatever. He changed his name a bunch of times. So again, yeah. I, go, I go back to the same question. Like, do we take everything away as far as what he done for music man i think for music no because at the end of the day like music is legacy and you can't take away somebody's legacy you know what i'm saying like that's that's something you can't erase from the earth you know what i mean if if you put something out there musically you know spiritually you know artistically whatever you want to do like that's going to hold on to your name it's no different than if you fucking took a naked picture of yourself on the instagram that shit could come down 20 years later to a job you know it's it's the same thing, you know, if you're making music, like, you got shit's going to carry with you. And I think, like, genuinely, if you t if we all went back, like, four years ago, maybe three years ago, however long ago, before all this Diddy crap started, and we really looked at the legacy aspect of him, and we put it in a proportion, I mean, there wouldn't be any discussion about it. I mean, Mans is a label owner. He's a businessman at the end of the day. He's an artist in itself, and he makes his own music. And, you know, it's 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 just a shame that, like, you know, all these different things are coming out about him now. It's, you know, who knows? Maybe they waited. Maybe a lot of people waited until he kind of got to that climax career point to come get him, you know, come get his money, come get everything that they've been waiting for. Maybe people that have been under graphs about it, you know, not talking about shit. Same deal. They were waiting for that moment. Who knows? Maybe this happened to be like the past year and a half of that. But I mean. Now, I don't think his legacy like can be wiped regardless. I think it can tank the fuck out of it, though. It can definitely kill his rep and destroy it, but can't kill the legacy. You know what's really crazy is that like the uh, allegations are just so heinous, and it seems like every day they're, they're becoming more and more like disturbing. That's the whole yeah. shit. That these, that these allegations are just... I don't know where they jumping out of what frame, like, you know what I'm saying? With that kind of shit, like every day is some like crazy shit. So, so drawing every day with Bull, man. But look, we have a good example because this has happened before in the music, uh, before recently, and especially, you know, tied to hip hop and R&B with R. Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine like, and this is the man that gave us, I believe I can fly. Like that's isn't that crazy to think about that? Like he gave us that record plus other records. And no, but I'm just saying, I this. believe I can fly, bro. Like th these are these are these once in a lifetime like type of Beatles yesterday type of records, the records that you I will always see. I can fly. You feel me? <laughs> crazy. Like so 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 how, so how did you deal with what like were you were you engaged when the whole shit with R. Kelly popped off? Like were you engaged with that news? When it first came out, I forget how young I was or how old I was, whatever. But I mean, this was only I a did, few years ago, really. Yeah. So yeah. I, I must have been. Do you know what year it was? Like 2016, was, 2017? He literally, not, nah, bro. He literally just got locked up like 2019 or 2020. This was recent, bro. All right. So that was, yeah. So then I was probably like 18, 19 before I got like signed and shit hearing about it. Yeah. I would probably, I, I mean, I was a part of it. I knew about it. And I thought it was fucking crazy. I mean, it's R. Kelly. Like, how the fuck? Do you remember? Do you remember the allegations that had for him? Do you remember? Uh, I'd have to joggle my memory back, but I don't know. I, you probably got to refresh me, man. It's so, so the allegations were that he was, you know, inviting these teenage girls. First, you know, they were groupies, this and that. And then he picked out like 20 or 30 of them. He invited him to his house where he already had like, you know, a, a so called, you know, quote unquote, like a dungeon in his uh, basement. So these 30 girls go, 
these 30 girls go down in a basement. Obviously, he takes their phones, everything and everything. So the allegations were that these girls were living there for months on end without having any contact with the outside world. And from what they're saying is that he was just doing crazy shit. Like he had them, you know, stick buildings up to him. Like imagine, like it's like a sex dungeon in your bait. Where, and, and the thing is that like it's it's young girls, young girls, like 17, 18, you know what I'm saying? Like crazy shit. And God. and they and, and the the crazy part is is they were probably targeting these types of girls, you know, girls that maybe Absolutely. don't don't have like family backup or support or because imagine son you're not about to have your 17 year old girl go daughter go missing for a couple of months without somebody checking in bro oh absolutely now if you're a father and you fucking lose your kid i mean like you're gonna go all in about yours and find your daughter i mean that's a given but that's so, that's fucking crazy so imagine so allegations wow. like so allegations like that be it bad enough that it's disgusting and it's like demonic and it's all types of shit but imagine the psychological shit behind it like this is not just r kelly chilling at a, a concert and some girl just rolls up now nah, like yeah. it seems like these girls were targeted you know what i'm saying well yeah but it also makes you wonder like how do these men or these artists get involved with targeting these women like are they a part of like corporations or like fucking like clicks or something like that that revolve around that because like big money goes into big media everybody knows that you know there's a lot of money that's flown around media and you know imagery of artists and commercialized anything you know propaganda so like it makes you wonder like are these artists like a part of something that like revolves around that on the fucking low like what it like why you know I mean? Nah, it's not nah, listen there's we we don't really want to get into you know what i'm saying all the like how how the industries are run and everything like that and people all the way yeah. to the top because we're gonna go down a crazy ass rabbit hole but yeah. even even if you think about it on a simple level you can have your you know bodyguards or whatever or your man's from around the way like just you know what i'm saying tell you like yo i got girls over there blah 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 and this and that you know what i'm saying like it's not it's not hard bro but the fact is that you're praying like this is an old older man praying on these and like oh man god forbid like i can't even think about the shit like imagine what they you know what they survive so yeah. again i don't want to i don't want to go back down a nasty r kelly hole whatever hole man but yeah. um again i go back to the same question like how do we take a man that gave us i believe i can fly and like do we take away all his legacy now uh i mean it's still hard to say too because again like i mean at the end of the day people make their decisions people are still people regardless if they're famous or they're not and we as the listener and us as people have the choice to either listen to him or not listen to him and most people knew r kelly from his music so I mean, again, you can't like, it's like you can't slander the legacy because if that shit never existed, you know what I'm saying? The legacy would still exist regardless. You know, it's still going to live on. It's Can your you... choice as a listener to choose what you want to listen to or indulge in the music and knowing what that person is about and what they've done. I'm 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 gonna do an experiment, man. Next time we me and you kicking it, I'm gonna put on I believe I can fly and see if you can <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> see 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 if you can ever listen to that song the same way again. That's my question. That's There's my no opinion. way. No, nah, I mean personally for me, no. Like so, I couldn't nah. exactly, exactly, nah. bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I we I don't I don't think I could ever hear Diddy go, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like I don't I don't <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's it takes a whole other form now with Diddy, bro. Like because you hear have... what's like you hear the yeah. I oh my god, straight up. It's like once you that's the problem. Once you get the bad information and it taints the good music, the music just turns into bad information. It's like it don't matter. It just fucks that shit. Your head. That shit it got sucks. to me, especially especially YouTube, man. F like yeah. all you all you YouTubers out there with your crazy ass facts. Like yo, there was this one video with like. All the gay lines that Biggie said, man, and like, ah. they were, I'm like, yo, are you killing it for me right now, bro? Like, this is Biggie, bro. This is like the Holy Grail and shit, bro. Like, like you're ruining it, man. Like, come on, we gotta keep some. We gotta keep yeah. some good somewhere. Maybe not with Denny, but he's somewhere with some other artists. Fuck. 
And it's like super, you know, super sus bars, like for real. Like you listening to that shit, like, whoa, like, was I really bumping this back in the day? Like, <laughs> <laughs> was That's I crazy. really listening to Diddy back in the day? Damn. But, but this is a big thing. So I guess more relevant to you would be like the whole Drake story. So, so how did you feel about all the allegations? Well, I think I asked you this before, but since we're on this topic, like when all the allegations from you know Kendrick brought up in, in the diss songs, like how did you feel about that? 